Good afternoon. Uh, we've got a few more things we need to cover before the end of the school year. So let's go ahead and title our notes. Today's the fifth. So five, five, Cinco de Mayo. So last week and um, today we finished up the activity where when given factored form, uh, most of us did the distributed property where um, you had x times x, so that was x squared, and then we did x times 2, that's 2x. Then we have negative 4 times x, which is negative 4x, and then we multiplied negative 4 times 2, which was negative 8. And then we took care of our like terms, and so we had x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then, so this was our factored form, this was our standard form. Now hopefully you recognize that the x squared is this x times x, and the negative 8 is the two last um, terms in each parenthesis multiplied together. So um, we want to start practicing going from standard form to factored form using these two ideals that you know that um, the first term is x squared, and the last term is the last two numbers multiplied to this. But then when you add or subtract them, you get the middle term here. Okay? So we're going to look at this example here. We have y squared plus 13y plus 42. Okay? So it's in standard form. I know my a is 1. It's positive. It's going to go up. I know my y-intercept is 42. And I can get my axis of symmetry and vertex from that b. But um, I want to get the factored form to find the roots. So I know factored form looks like this. We have two parentheses, right? And then I know to get the y squared, I have to multiply y times y. Okay. Now I look at my signs, I have pluses in here. So I know that this is going to be plus and plus. Okay. So then I have to think to myself, um, as we did here, these two numbers multiply to this. So these two numbers will multiply to my y squared, or my um, y-intercept, 42. So when I think about that, I'd like to make myself a little chart. And I know that these two numbers have to be factors of 42, right? And I know that they have to uh, add to 13. So I want to think about what numbers those would be. When I think about 42, I automatically think about 6 times 7, because it's often the one that most people forget or don't know. So if I do 6 times 7, that multiplies to 42. So that works. And then when I add those, I get when I do 6 plus 7, I get 13, which is what I need here, because here I have 13, and here I have 42. So the factored form must be y plus 6 and y plus 7. So if I want to check, y times y is y squared. 6 times 7 is 42. When I do the middle terms, I'll have 6y and 7y, and that'll add to 13. Now there's a few of you that like the box method, and they have an example of that here. And we can still do box method with this, if you like the box method. Um, and I'm just going to fill in what I know. It may be easier this way. This is where the y squared is going to go, right? This is where the 42 is going to go. And I know these like terms are going to add to 13y. So then I have to think about how I'm going to fill in the box. I know um, y times y will give me y squared. So then I need to think about what number times what number will give me 42. And it's a little bit of a guess and check, but some of it's based on what you know about factors and multiplying. So again, if I put 6 and 7 here, 7y, um, when I multiply, multiply 6 by y, that's 6y. And then these add up to the 13y. So again, then I know it's y plus 6 times y plus 7. Now I know this is a little bit tricky. It might take you a couple times to um, get it. And I really hope that my head is not in the way of what you're seeing right here. If it is, I'm really sorry. 
I'm going to do this example over here. I know my head won't be in the way for that one. So we'll move over here. Oops. All right, so if I'm thinking about the distributive method, okay, I know that m times m will give me m squared, right? And then I have a plus here and a minus here, okay? So when I think about that, when I'm making my chart here, I have to think about um, the factors of negative 7, and there's really only one, right? So I have to think about what will multiply to negative 7, but add to 6, because we have 6m that's going to add to that, okay? So um, obviously the only factors of 7 are 1 and 7, right? But if I do 1 plus 7, that'll give me 8. So it's not a positive 1 and a positive 7. I need to be a positive 6. So if I make this a negative if I make this a negative 1 and a positive 7, negative 1 times 7 gives me negative 7. And negative 1 plus 7 gives me a positive 6. And that's exactly what I need right here. So just to recap, these need to multiply to negative 7, but add to 6, because my negative 7 is y-intercept, and this is my 6. So I know that negative 1 and 7 will work, and it doesn't matter. You could put the negative 1 here, and then the positive 7 here. Oops, that didn't come through very good. Or we could have um, m plus 7, and then m minus 7. Either way, but we have m times m, which is m squared. That's a 1. 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. And then we'll have 1m and negative 7m. And I did that wrong because it's got to be positive 6m. My signs aren't right here. See, it's a good thing I checked. This should be m. Um, yeah, I messed that up. Sorry. Let me rewrite that. Why is that not working out very well? Um, it's like delayed or something. Stop. Sorry, so um, I can have m minus 1 times m plus 7, or I can do m plus 7 times m minus 1. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one of those factors you put first, as, as long as the plus and the minus are in the same spot. All right, let's do one more sample. Um, let's look at this, this one. We're in factor or standard form. I want to go in factored form. I have x, and I have x, and I have to, I like the chart, I have to figure out what will multiply to 18, because these two multiply to this number, but add to 9, okay? So I want to think about the, um, oh, it's neg not positive 9, it's negative 9. Don't make that mistake. Come on. There we go. I don't know why that's acting so funny. Um, so that was, it's got to add to negative 9 here, okay? So I think about the multiples of 18. Um, I think about 6 times 3 is a positive 18, but it adds to 9, and I ne need negative 9, so that's close. So I think about, well, negative 6 times negative 3 is still a positive 18, and that adds to a negative 9. So now I know it adds to negative 9 and multiplies to positive 18, so negative 6 and negative 3 are my two terms for this factored form. Okay, um, so we're going to practice a little bit of that tomorrow and make sure you took good notes and if you write down the secret phase, Mrs. Thompson is awesome, you can get one extra credit point because you told me that you are listening to this video and not just copying stuff down. It's our little secret, don't tell anybody. Good night.